Stevens versus Ross Miriam. I mean, if it happens, I'm all for it. I'm just, just saying, I don't know how many times we plus the Tamio and didn't win. Ross starts out on Vessel of Nascency. We're underway. Todd, a planes and a pass. And Todd on the draw with these two planes. There are two copies of Knight of the White Orchid in his build. We'll see if maybe that's going to be his turn three play. Thalia's lieutenant from Todd. He'll presumably build that up later on. For Ross, he reveals four. He actually just, you see Primal Druid, Yavimaya Coast, Nissa's Pilgrimage, and Kozilex Return. So no matter what he picks, he's going to have four card types in his graveyard. Maybe more importantly, he has Kozilex Return in his yard. Death, that was a really good vessel. Yeah, takes the Primal Druid, and he'll keep on going. Yeah, that is just about perfect. Land and Pilgrimage from Ross. He is spell mastered. He has both the return and the pilgrimage in his yard. Pilgrimage, no pilgrim's eye, so not quite perfect with that one, but. <laughs> well, it's actually a ramp spell. Do, do like that. For Todd Stevens, he has Knight of the White Orchid. Can get a free land off that one. See, another Thalia's Lieutenant. I don't know that he has another land. Yeah, it's unclear that he can get to all three colors of his deck, the knight unable to find any kind of blue-green land. Yeah, he can get one of them. Looks like he'll play Thalia's Lieutenant, double pumping his first one, and swing, and just play Evolving Wilds. He'll pass. Okay. And given that Ross played a pump spell, or rather a ramp spell, he knows that the knight of White sure. Arc will be able to find a land next turn regardless. Draw is Wretched Griff for Ross Miriam. This is great. This means... Two turns down the road, Ross can just pop that Kozilex return regardless of the play that Todd makes. Mm -hmm. So we see. Looks like Primal Druid from Ross Miriam. If Todd had something like Nether White Orchid, third Thalia's Lieutenant, he can make the one Lieutenant a 6-6. Six -six. Vessel of Nascency for Ross, and he'll pass. Looks like Ross maybe doesn't have that land six, so if so, this is a really strong line. It'll ensure that next turn he can do everything he wants to. Mm -hmm. The danger about running out, though, with the Primal Druid is if Todd plays a Reflector Mage, Ross actually can't sweep the board next turn. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to cast any of his seven mana Eldrazi. Right. So so there's there's an argument to actually holding on to the Druid just so that with six lands he can go one, two, and do them both. Right. Just cast it in Wretched Griff right away. Yeah. We see Knight of the White Orchid from Todd Stevens. A and it would be really punishing. You see, he's going to find Prairie Stream. So if Todd does have that Reflector Mage, he's, he's going to get Ross for it. Mm -hmm. He would need to have another land, um, a non-forest land. doesn't have the pieces. Lamholt, pacifist. He's just not really respecting the Eldrazi here. It's, it, this is making it so easy for Ross. Mm, he's just saying, if you're triggering that return, I'm out. So let's hope you miss. Ross finds Emrakul. He flips over, puts another return in the yard. But yeah, this is, he does have the Wretched Griff. It's going to play here. You see, he didn't even take the land because he already has it. Takes Emrakul for his hand. Blocks. Okay, this works too. Blocks the damage with Primal Druid. Can no just need. Get yeah. up to seven lands naturally. Save some life this way. He finds the island. And now we're seeing a matchup where Primal Druid's just, actually just a just fairly straight. good spell. I'm a little surprised that Todd actually put the Pacifist into play here. It's just. It's just another thing that's going to die to Kozlek's return, yeah. I understand the idea if he's, he was playing as though Todd Ross doesn't have it, but like, Ross has it. <laughs> he sure does. Seven mana, Wretched Griff, sweep the board, draw a card. And Ross is early. It looks like his next turn can Emrakul. Has an another Kozilek's return in the yard. Just easy as pie. He's going to get this one. And Todd has a collected company, some more creatures right. he can cast. He's certainly not out of gas, but he's behind now. Thalia, Duskwatch Recruiter. Those are the plays for Todd Stevens. Get a count for Miriam. He has a land, an instant, an enchantment, a creature, and a sorcery. So there's five. Yeah. Here's Emrakul. She will 
trigger the Kozilex return, and Todd, and nah, she'll do nothing. That's going to be the game. Unfortunately, that was not turn four. So not getting a turn four win on You're my close. bingo card. You're close. Yeah. You got, we need to get Cedric on camera for you. That's really going to help. <laughs> yes. He's playing mono white humans today. I think I think that's your best so chance on the turn four win. You can see win. him over Todd's shoulder. I'm going to assume he's winning, assume it's turn four, and I'm, I'm just going to check this box. That is – I. I know that you're the bingo judge, but I is that is I'm gonna appeal that one. Well, there's no bingo head judge. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna look at the sideboards. So on Todd Stevens side, he's down a game. We see Tamio, Knight of the White Orchid, three Gideons, two Nissas, two days undoing. Hey, that one's on the bingo sheet. Ooh. Two Declaration in Stone, an Ojatai's Command, and three Tragic Arrogance. So I assume that we're gonna see Todd go more planeswalker heavy. Yeah, sure. so that he's better against Kozlex return. Days on doing is going to be his graveyard hate slash Kozlex return hate. Okay, that card actually does shuffle the graveyard in. Right. Right. Uh, where you might see summary dismissal or learn from the past. He just has days on doing. And then we can see uh, the Ojatai's command as well. We've seen that cast against these big mana, big creature spells a good amount of times this weekend. We go over to Ross's sideboard. Two Narwhal Dryad, a Den Protector, a Nissa Basswood Seer, an Ishkanagraph Widow, two Explosive Vegetation, two Jace, Friends Prodigy, two Clash of Wills, a Coax from the Blind Eternities, an Elder Deep Fiend, a Lashweed Lurker, and an Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Uh, so he's going to try to get lower to the ground, get these Narwhal Dryads in as some early blockers, Ishkana to gum up the ground as well. And the extra Elder Deep Fiend, another way to trigger Kozlex Return, and something that's bigger than most of Todd's creatures. Yeah, it's... Well, Ross making it easy for that game, to be sure. So players are getting ready here. If you're joining us, this is our last standard open before the release of Kaladesh. And once Kaladesh comes out, though, everything's going to change, and the first place it's going to change is over at the Grand Prix we are running in Atlanta. That is just over a month out. So this is Kaladesh Limited. It's going to be October 7th through 9th. GP Atlanta, it's a Grand Prix offering hosted by StarCityGames.com. So more things coming out about it. We now encourage you to register this week as we can show off the playmat for the event. You see this, of course, is the city of Atlanta. I don't know how you couldn't recognize that this is Atlanta. Beautiful it's, downtown Atlanta. This is how I remember it last time I was there. But you get this playmat just for entering, but the numbers are limited. So if you want one, make sure you register this week. The register by this Friday, it's coming Friday, September 9th, and this playmat is included to everyone who enters with it. So you, to register, all you have to do is go over to StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta and get yourself signed up. I've actually already signed up, and I'm going to be there. I am way pumped for Galadesh. Right on. Limited GP seems right up your alley. So you're not, you're not as much of a road warrior as you used to be. No, I mean, well, in the commentary sense, I suppose. But, sure, yeah. sure. Ba used to never miss a limited GP. Now it's usually don't miss a limited GP. It's closer. <laughs> both players here at 5-1. and one. You see 7th and 16th in the 2016 standings. They both want one of those three at-large spots at the end of the year. For Todd Stevens, 7th on the leaderboard, the man from Denton, Texas, has five open top eights, but no win just yet. This is really – he started his SCG – I guess career about a year ago here on the in the SCG tour started you know really getting strong finishes last year maybe was ambitious it said he'd only started halfway through the year but he was going to qualify for the players championship it didn't end up doing that but has made a really good run at it this year he was the the fourth man fourth place of the unqualified players in season two so the first one to miss he's currently got one of the at large spots for the season to end today mm. very fancy dresser he's a teacher by trade. That's one of the ways that you remind the students who's in charge of the classroom. You know, I, I did do a bunch of teaching. I was never much of a suit and tie sort of person. But it does work. Well, you're you, not wrong. you commanded authority with your fancy hats. Whereas Todd is not much of a That's hat true. guy. That's true. Actually, we had a no hats policy, so I, I couldn't wear a hat. Was that? You can't wear hats in school, right? Did the instate that policy because of you, or no, was it already no. in effect? I, you can't wear a hat in school. Come on now. <laughs> How, how terrible! How, know, ter right? no, how terrible did it feel every Should time you, you had to enforce that rule? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> walks into the classroom like, with like, a driver's cap, like, and you on. have to make them take it off. <laughs> and then I would keep it. That was the secret. <laughs> <laughs> the rule. That's, that's, that's where all the hats, hats came from. That's came from. These are former students. <laughs> just took their hats. 
All right, looks like we are underway here for game two. Ross on a mulligan. He has a scry to the bottom. Evolving Wilds for Todd. Last game, his slow start really punished. We've talked about how Team Emerge emerging this matchup. They want Wretched Griff and Kozilek's return. Those mm -hmm. are the most important cards. And in game one, Ross had that Vessel in Ace and C that just lined up Delirium perfectly on turn two as well as flipping a Kozilek's -like return. There's that day's undoing. Todd has brought in out the sideboard. Once again, his turn two play will be Thalia's Lieutenant. I'm really hoping he casts that day's undoing. I got a bingo square so with that So does something one. have to happen with it or you just get the square if he casts just, just it? Just cast it. Yeah. You have so many more X's on your sheet than mine. This is just... They don't line up well at all. That's true. I'm, I'm only going to get four squares, but they're just going to be those plus the free space. It's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> Remember, of course, you're wondering what the heck we're talking about. Head on over to StarCityGames.com, the Tom Ross article, or Tom Ross's Twitter. He has set up a bingo for this weekend. It's been excellent. Tragically, Todd Stevens off of blue mana can't cast Days Undoing just yet. Does cast Thalia's... The Thalia, though. So Ross will go ahead and crack. Woof. The land. Plays that mountain and casts Kozlex return. And what a huge Kozlex return there. And the odds of Ross doing that in this team or emerge deck, he has that one basic mountain. The third turn yeah. Kozlex return is so brutal. Sometimes you see them traverse for it, but I don't think we even had that. Ross will then miss his pilgrimage as with spell mastery. Todd's whole play was to just recast the Thalia. Mm -hmm. In particular with Todd playing the Bant Humans version, his deck is a lot weaker to the return itself. Yeah, his creatures aren't just naturally X3s. Now, they, they scale better, so if Ross doesn't have that on curve, he can get his whole team out of range. Mm -hmm. But until then, you can get some really brutal plays. Yeah, Todd's primarily looking to play against a Bant Mirror with a different set of creatures, and... Facing down Kozlek's return is really not where he wants to be. Todd plays Yavamaya Coast. You see that Coast entering the battlefield tapped because of the Thalia. And Todd's just not even going to be able to cast Days Undoing this game. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he hasn't hit another land. You see he has a Reflector Mage in hand that Days Undoing. Those are uncastable. He might have Knight of the White Orchid. He also has Knight of the White Orchid, but you see it's Forest Forest Plains. It's just, mm -hmm. ugh, he's just off everything by a little bit. Right. This is just not lining up very well. So he plays the only card he can. Thalia's Lieutenant puts a counter on Thalia. That's, I really like the flavor of that play. That's what I would expect the Lieutenant to do, by the way. Yeah. This, these cards are just supposed to play well together. Thalia's Lancers can find Thalia. So that's another Thalia combo. Well, yeah, they're the Vanguard. Yeah. That makes sense. We're back over to Ross Miriam. He's untaps with five, going to play two six. At seven mana, he can just start playing something like Wretched Griff. He has a Kozlex return in the yard. So it's going to be Traverse the Ulfen Vault for Ross. Instant, land, sorcery, enchantment. Yeah, he is Deliri has Delirium, and he'll play Ishkana. She'll end the battlefield tapped from Thalia, as will her three spiders. Okay. And Ross is at 14, so Todd will be able to chip away for now, though once those spiders untap, things get a lot tougher for Todd. Yeah. Damage will be way harder to come by at that point. Now, he doesn't, I don't believe he has anything like Declaration in Stone. He has two in the board, which actually is a, you wouldn't think it, but it's, it's pretty good against the team or merge deck. Mm -hmm. It's a totally reasonable card. Sometimes you even could snag Primal Druid with it and be totally happy. That's great. Yeah, I, when I played this matchup, I'm very disappointed when my Primal Druids get declarations. Lamo Pass Rest from Todd. Still no lands. He pumps the Lieutenant and swings for six. He's got Ross Miriam down to eight, but that might be just where things stop. Let's see, for Miriam, looks like he picked up what could be a Gnarlwood Dryad out of the board. Has two more lands, four more green cards. If Todd wouldn't mind drawing an island and just casting that Days Undoing on his way out the door, I would really appreciate him <laughs> helping my bingo card. He could still sneak through this one. I'm not going to count him out just yet. There are declarations and stones in the sideboard, and if he has one of them, and if he draws a declaration, this is a really good game for him. Yeah. Ross still needs to find some big Eldrazi monster to trigger this Kozilek's return. It's going to cast Grapple with the past. 
finds Pilgrim's Eye. Pilgrim's Eye, not the biggest Eldrazi that there is. Yeah, I think he's just missing the finisher at this point. He'll pass. Now, this is interesting. He's not casting Pilgrim's Eye. He's passing. There is a declaration in Todd Stevens's hand. I wonder what Ross is up to with this mana. Does he have a blue mana on tap? I mean, he has the three forests. Could hmm. potentially have a clash of wills that he's representing. I want to say the fourth land he left off on tap was Yavamaya Coast. There may just not be much reason, I suppose, to play the Pilgrim's Eye. If you assume he's going to have to flash back, or he's going to have to use if that he, Kozak's return. Yeah, if he already has the Eldrazi <laughs> in hand, then he'd just be killing the Pilgrim's Eye. Yeah, there's not much of a point. As if long he, as he has another land drop in hand, too. If he doesn't have it, he kind of wants to cast it because it enters tapped because of the Thalia. Declaration in stone from Todd Stevens. He'll hit, a, I assume, a spider token. Oh, he's going to hit the actual Ishkana. All right, sure, okay. he'll so swing. Yeah, the spiders are just chump blockers. And one, uh, one on each of them for Ross. That's a, a terrible sign if you're a Todd Stevens fan. It means that Ross has the Eldrazi. Sure looks like it. Draws a card. Going to yep. go ahead. Yeah, there's Wretched Grip. He's going to cast Grapple at not even. Untaps. Draw from Ross. It was so close, right? If, if say, Todd had land, Thalia's lieutenant, Declaration and Stone on the spiders, he could get Ross to just about zero. Mm-hmm. But here's going to be Wretched Griff, and the Griff will bring Kozilek back. He will return to cleanse the board of humans. And now just the Eldrazi remain. Wretched Griff is the fourth Eldrazi Titan. As in the storyline, the Wretched Griff <laughs> was the end of humanity. <laughs> and Ross will traverse for Emrakul. Todd, just with the three lands he started the game with. Island. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Nissa Vast with Seer. That's not going to do it. It's going to be Todd's just about his last turn. And he extends the hand. So it's Ross Miriam with Teamer Emerge 2-0. A convincing victory for him as he locks his spot in day two. For Todd Stevens, he has two more rounds to try at it. And for Ryan Overturf, it's a bingo card with another unchecked space. Everyone.